Today, uh, I would like to talk about a criterion that has been recently introduced in the obstructionist debate. Uh, this criterion uh, is a logicality criterion for uh, logical indefinites and has been uh, proposed by Jack Woods in a paper of 2014. Uh, this criterion has been introduced as a generalized version of the Tarskian criterion of isomorphism invariance. Um, the general idea was that this criterion provides uh, a new distinction between logical and non-logical expression. And in particular, uh, Hallow has to prove the logicality of uh, variable binding operators uh, such as choice operator or abstraction operator like uh, cardinal operators are used by Hume principle. Uh, but uh, um, a relevant assumption for the adoption of this uh, logicality criterion is to emphasize the indeterminacy of reference of this kind of expression, so of logical indefinites. And such kind of indeterminacy is uh, usually uh, spelled out as a kind of arbitrary reference. So my double aim today is to discuss this criterion in the abstractionist framework, and in particular, uh, to, in order to note that if we consider which operators this criterion of weak invariance applies to, uh, we are able to recover uh, the philosophical achievements of logicism. Uh, because we are weakening, but we are also able to widen uh, the philosophical goal of, um, of logicism. But uh, uh, the second aim in the last part of the talk um, will be to show that if we consider uh, what this criterion of weak invariance in uh, uh, implies, so the notion of arbitrary reference uh, and unexpected similarity um, between logicist and structuralist project arises. And um, this, uh, this kind of similarity has been already mentioned in the paper of Jack Woods and in uh, another paper of 2020 of Bocuni and Woods about uh, structuralist neologicism concerning uh, the only principle, the only Hume principle. But the, my aim today is uh, to uh, consider what this uh, similarity uh, consists of. And I think that it consists of a special rule of abstraction principle as implicit definition of abstract objects. Uh, so the, the framework, the abstractionist framework um, consists of uh, uh, theories that are composed by a logical theory augmented with an abstraction principle uh, of the form the abstract of A is equal to the abstract of B if and only if a relation R holds between A and B. Uh, and in the traditional framework of uh, abstraction principle, uh, this, by, this kind of biconditionals are usually interpreted in a canonical way. And with this label, I mean a uniform reading of all the primitive and defined expression of the vocabulary. Um, so canonical reading, uh, I think that implies uh, at least two main assumptions. And at face value reading of the abstractionist vocabulary uh, following this reading, abstraction operator are considered as function symbol or variable binding operators and abstract terms as complex singular terms. And the second assumption is a semantical assumption concerning the kind of reference of the abstractionist vocabulary. So abstraction operator is uh, interpreted as uh, uh, by a unique and knowable set of ordered pairs, and abstract terms are interpreted as uh, always referential and denoting singular, knowable, and standard object that we call uh, abstract objects. Uh, the issue of the logicality of such a theory uh, was originally raised within the similar abstractionist program uh, of Frege's logicism, in which we can distinguish two main goals, the revisional goal of derived arithmetical laws from logical laws, 
and a philosophical part of our goal, uh, namely to define arithmetical objects as logical objects. So for example, the cardinal numbers of a concept F as the extension of the concept being equinumerous to the concept F. More precisely, Frege's system um, is composed by second order logic augmented with basically five, uh, which is uh, an abstraction principle. And in the Fugian perspective, uh, we um, consider uh, basic, we should consider basically five uh, logical axioms derived from this principle as a logical theorem, in principle, the abstraction principle concerning cardinal number, and from in principle and second order logic, second order piano arithmetic. Uh, and at the same time, basic law five in the Freudian perspective was an implicit definition of the extensional terms. And so uh, these terms are logical uh, definitia of cardinal numbers. But as is uh, well known, this project fails because uh, Russell, uh, we can derive from Russell paradox a contradiction. And this contradiction uh, proves that the uh, Frege system is inconsistent, a uh, theory is not logical, and basically five uh, uh, should be considered uh, has inconsistent, so mm, it, it, uh, it is not a logical axiom and it is not an implicit definition of the logical object. Uh, in the last century, however, uh, there have been uh, different uh, different strategies have been proposed uh, to save uh, Frege's project. Uh, in particular, we can distinguish two main options. Uh, the neologicist strategies, a strategy that uh, consists in excluding the problematic axiom, uh, namely basic law five, um, and assuming Hume principle as an analytical and non-logical axiom, uh, deriving piano arithmetic uh, from uh, directly from Hume principle. Uh, and on another uh, kind of strategies to save uh, uh, Fregean project um, consists of preserving uh, basic law five, but um, imposing no logical restriction on basic law five itself or on the comprehension action schema or other uh, logical, um, logical uh, axioms of the, the system. And again, derive from this uh, modified uh, Fregian system, uh, second order piano rhythmic. The general, uh, the general result is that we can uh, recover consistency and arithmetic, but by exactly renouncing to the logicality of the project, so to the philosophical aim of this project. Uh, recently, uh, this topic of logicality has, uh, has been uh, However, resume the regarding consistent abstraction principle like in principle, in light of the intervening studies about logicality has topic neutrality formalized in a, in a theoretical uh, model theoretical perspective by the criteria of permutation and isomorphism invariance. And more precisely, in the abstractionist context, we can distinguish uh, this uh, topic in at least three questions, respectively concerning the logicality of the abstraction of the abstraction principle, so of the uh, biconditional, for example, in principle, uh, of the abstraction relation on the right hand side of the principle, for example, equinumerosity, and the logicality of the abstraction function, so the denotation of the for example, cardinal operator on the left-hand side of the principle. Uh, very briefly, I try to recap the main result concerning the, these three different, um, different questions. Concerning the logicality of the abstraction principle, the main criterion that has been uh, considered and proposed is the criterion of contextual invariance that says that an abstraction principle is contextual invariant if and only if uh, for any abstraction function from the second order domain to the first order domain for any permutation of the domain, the permutation of the function satisfies the principle whenever the function does. Uh, this criterion, however, is too weak to prove logicality because it underdetermines the choice between principles that are mutually inconsistent and it is is uh, uh, implied by any criterion of invariance of abstraction relations. So we can uh, reduce the criterion of uh, abstraction principle as contextual invariance to other criteria um, concerning the abstraction relation. 
Concerning abstraction relation, different criteria has been proposed and evaluated. Uh, and in particular, the strongest one, double internal invariance, uh, turns now to be able uh, to select the logical abstraction relation and given uh, the previous implication between relation and uh, uh, the whole abstraction principle, uh, this, uh, this criterion is also able to select uh, so-called logical uh, principle. Uh, but if we consider the, the last question, the, the last problem, so logicality of the abstraction function, uh, the main criterion uh, and the only criterion that has been proposed is uh, objectual invariance that says that an abstraction function is uh, invariant, objectual invariant, if and only if this uh, function is invariant has a saturated permutation. Uh, the problem is that this criterion fails for any function from the power set of a domain in the domain itself, uh, when the domain contains at least two elements. Moreover, Antonelli showed that uh, in any case in which the abstraction relation has internal invariance and the second order domain is closed under permutation, then the function is not objectual invariance. So we have a provisional conclusion that uh, is uh, quite problematic and seem to be a dilemma because we have a criterion um, for abstraction relation that is able to select logical abstraction relation and uh, logical in, the, in this meaning, logical abstraction principle. But on the other side, we have another criterion of objectual invariance for the abstraction relation that not only fails for any function from the power set of the on T, but fails precisely in case of operator related to logical relations. So the operator fail to be logical to, or just in case they are uh, implicitly defined by logical abstraction principle. I think that uh, the new criterion of weak invariance that I would like to discuss um, is useful also to uh, provide a, a different conclusion to this, uh, to this uh, situation concerning the topic of logicality. However, um, in order to introduce this new criterion, we have to uh, consider some preliminary cl clarification. Uh, in particular, we have to consider the failure of the objectual invariance as uh, a, um, a consequence of the canonical reading of the abstraction principle that I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the slides. And uh, we uh, have also to consider that canonical reading of abstraction principle is not a necessary reading uh, of this kind of principle because it uh, not provides uh, does not provide all the only information um, that the biconditional uh, says. Um, this uh, sort of reading of abstraction principle presupposes a meta-theoretical assumption that we uh, distinguish as a face value reading of the abstractionist vocabulary and uh, a semantical assumption concerning the kind of reference of expression of different syntactical categories. And so uh, we as last uh, premise, we uh, have also to consider that these assumptions are not necessary to derive the mathematical result of the abstraction principle and uh, probably follows from the philosophical pro program in which the abstraction principle have been originally involved in, in particular logicism, and uh, maybe uh, from the logical background of, of the theory. Uh, so excluding canonical reading of this uh, assumption, uh, we obtain a less demanding reading of abstraction principle um, that, uh, that, that are sufficient to achieve the mathematical result, but are neutral from a philosophical point of view respect to different and uh, traditionally opposite perspective on abstract objects. Um, the main uh, features that uh, uh, we can note in this uh, less the reading of the abstraction principle is a peculiar, peculiar, peculiar kind of referential indeterminacy um, of abstractionist vocabulary. Uh, 
given this uh, general framework, I think we have still two main options, two main alternatives to the assumption of canonical reading. A syntactical altern alternative, and in this perspective, uh, indeterminacy uh, suggests uh, to paraphrase abstract terms as bound variables. This uh, strategy um, has been already adopted in other debates, for example, uh, for a quantificational reading of parameters or in a Russellian reading of indefinite expressions. And the other strategy uh, is uh, uh, to consider indeterminacy in a purely semantical uh, way and so consider that indeterminacy suggests an arbitrary notion of reference for abstract terms. Also, this strategy um, has been already used, uh, has uh, in the arbitrary interpretation uh, of parameters, or for example, in the Hilbertian interpretation of indefinite expression. However, uh, the idea is that now I will focus on this second strategy, so uh, adopting a semantical alternative uh, uh, to the canonical reading of abstraction principle. And uh, in the last part of the talk, I um, consider and compare this uh, semantical strategy uh, with the syntactical one. Uh, in this uh, second perspective, adopting um, a semantical alternative reading um, of abstraction principle, we can introduce um, the criterion of weak objectual invariance that says that an expression phi um, is a weak invariant just in case for uh, all the domain D the first and by jackson um, I from D in the first, uh, the denotation of the expression on the, do the domain uh, is such that if we apply uh, the bijection to this denotation, and this denotation in a semantical meaning of arbitrariness is a set, uh, is equal to the denotation of the expression on the, the first, the domain the first. Uh, this is the general uh, formulation of this criterion uh, that presupposes a semantical notion of arbitrariness. The same criterion could be also uh, formulated uh, by adopting an epistemical meaning of arbitrariness, saying that an expression is weak invariant if and only if the set of candidate denotation of the expression on, on a domain uh, D is such that uh, if we apply the bijection to this denotation, to this uh, set of candidate denotation, we obtain uh, the set of candidate denotation of phi on the first, the domain the first. And uh, the main result that has been proved concerning this criterion is that if an abstraction operator is a weak invariant, then it is associated to an equivalence relation that is in turn weak invariant. So, uh, my aim is to explore which uh, principle and which uh, kind of abstraction principle satisfy this uh, criterion. Uh, firstly, we can note that the Fregean direction um, operator defined by direction principle that says that uh, uh, the direction of X is equal to the direction of Y, if and only if X and Y are parallel lines, uh, is not weak uh, invariant. Um, I, I skipped the, the details of the, of the proofs, maybe we can discuss them later. But in general, we can say that this criterion of the operator fails for many first order abstraction principles because they are based on partial equivalence relation that a fortiori are sensitive to the identity of the object in the domain and then are not invariant under permutation. We can also uh, further generalize a such uh, result, proving that any first order abstraction operator um, is not uh, permutation and a fortiori uh, isomorphism weak invariant. Uh, the proof of this uh, result is based on 
two main uh, uh, consideration. The first one that we already uh, see is that if an abstraction operator is weak invariant, then it is associated to an, 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 an abstraction relation that is weak invariant. And uh, the task can result that we have only four relational predicates that are weak invariant. So in particular, um, uh, we can conclude that uh, uh, except for the abstraction principle uh, eventually obtained by this four relation and for our uh, uh, purposes, uh, the identity relation and the universal relation in any other case for further sort of abstraction operator are not weak invariant. Uh, so we can exclude the first order abstraction principle, that first order abstraction principle are logical following this, uh, this criteria. Uh, on the other side, we um, already know that um, uh, the cardinal operator defined by in principle satisfy this criterion. Um, that is the result proved in the paper of Pocuni Wood to the 2020. And, uh, but I think that we can also show that uh, cardinal uh, numbers uh, um, could be considered logical in this uh, meaning also by um, considering different strategies to, to solve um, uh, Russell paradox and uh, in general to save a freaking project. Namely, we can provide that also the extensional operator uh, in the revised form when it is a, uh, defined by a consistent version of basic law five or in a consistent setting uh, could um, satisfy satisfies uh, weak invariance under permutation, at least permutation. Uh, so there, um, there are a very different way to um, solve Russell paradox. So to implicitly define the extensional operator, I suggest it's a kind of taxonomy that is not exhaustive. Uh, however, it could be useful in order to have a general picture uh, of the possible restriction of uh, basic law five. So um, we have uh, restriction of basic law five uh, uh, B um, that uh, are able to block the left to right conditional of the Phrygian theorem that says that uh, uh, for every object, an object belongs to the extension of a formula uh, if and only if it satisfies the formula. And the Phrygian restriction are not able to restore the consistency, but Boulosian restriction, namely restriction that selects the relevant concept that we have to consider in the evaluation of the uh, abstraction relation is able to provide a consistent version of basic law five. Uh, on the other side, blocking the right to left conditional of the Phrygian theorem about extension, we can consider predicative restriction of the comprehension axiom schema or different ways to uh, restrict um, basic law 5a uh, in, in the general the general uh, result of this uh, of this um, restriction is that uh, in all the consistent cases in which we are able to define the extensional operator this operator uh, turns now to be uh, weak invariant under permutation and I think that uh, this could be considered as a good result in a logic perspective because we are able to prove that uh, uh, not only um, cardinal operator uh, defined by in principle but also um, uh, this operator has defined uh, in a more Phrygian uh, way is uh, logical in this meaning. Uh, oh, I don't Monica, know, maybe I'm it's late. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 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 to sorry. No, no, yeah. no, it's late. Yeah, I, uh, you, sorry. you only have uh, three minutes left. So. Yes, I, I'm. I'm very sorry. I uh, okay. However, other other problems are, are arise because uh, um, there are other principles like uh, uh, the bad companions of Hume principle that satisfies this criterion. So a, a possible objection is that is that this criterion is. Uh, uh, useful uh, to prove uh, uh, the logicality of revised version of logicism, but just because uh, the criterion is actually too widely satisfiable. 
I think that we can answer, try to answer to this uh, general objection, saying that this criterion deals with the different issue, namely to capture the notion of logicality. And if we accept this kind of uh, answer, uh, we can also consider a, a last uh, controversial case um, that is provided by uh, abstraction principle concerning ordinal number, because in this exception, we can show that also ordinal number as defined by a consistent version of ordinal abstraction principles satisfy the same criterion of weak invariance. So uh, we go beyond the, the original uh, Frigian logicist uh, idea to show uh, the logicality of cardinal number, but we obtain also logicality of ordinal numbers. Uh, so the, this was the, the first part of, of the talk. Only a, a word about uh, the other parts, so the, the philosophical comparison between uh, logicism and structuralism, uh, reading of uh, uh, non-canonical way uh, to consider abstractionist vocabulary. The idea is uh, what we have said so far um, concern the semantical alternative, so an arbitrary interpretation of abstractionist vocabulary. But I mentioned before also a syntactical alternative that was an eliminative paraphrases of abstractionist vocabulary. And I think that we can consider in a parallel way these two strategy. Uh, and despite the alternative philosophical perspective, this proposal share the role of implicit definition in defining non-logical vocabulary. Uh, and the interpretation of abstract terms as characterized by a referential indeterminacy uh, has a consequence of the implicit definition. And also in, uh, we, we could try to formalize in a model theoretical perspective this analogy by formal semantics that are ana analog between uh, the arbitrary interpretation and some form of universalist and relativist structuralism. I'm very sorry for the timing. Uh, so the conclusion was uh, that Thank you very much. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Ludovica. Uh, unfortunately, we have uh, no more time for uh, discussion. Sorry.